Well, good morning, Christian Faith. We are so happy that you are able to join us. I want you to know I'm a little bit disappointed. There was a tremendous message that we spent a lot of time in putting together, talking about uh, the blood of Jesus Christ and the blood works. But I'm convinced that the devil really didn't want that message to be heard because we went through multiple tapings and then we had a final taping and the picture came out great, but there was no sound. I want you to know the devil is a liar, uh, but I am encouraged because I, I'm, I'm going to preach it again, just not today, not right now. I'm going to preach it again for you on next week. So make sure you tune in, that you tell somebody that you get connected with or you let them know that I'll be sharing with you a message talking about the blood works and it's important that you hear it because there's so much that's in it that the enemy doesn't want you to know. I'm convinced of it because of everything that just transpired today. But with that being said, we are not moved by what didn't happen. We know that all things work together for good to him that loves God and are called according to his purpose. So there must be a greater purpose that's still available. And so we're going to press into it. So this morning, we're going to share with you a classic message from way back in the day of when I was ministering the word. And I pray that this message or that this clip of this message will be a blessing to you. At the end, stay tuned. There's a few. Uh, announcers that I need to give to you and again we want to hug you like we always do but thank you so much for connecting with us we are sorry that we're not able to show you the blood works this morning but the blood still does work and we will show you that message on next Sunday but right now we want you to grab your Bible grab something to write with and something to write on and let this message be a blessing to your life and we'll be back in just a few moments to. Pastor Jason, will you come and bless us? Let's praise God as he comes. Bishop Obi, good to see you. I'll say something later about you. One of the most difficult things to do in life is to give God praise when you're in pain. When you have questions that relate to God, why? Why did it go this direction? Why didn't you fix this? Why didn't you change this? And you want me to praise you in that? But Pastor Brandon, yesterday when I was studying, God let me trip over something in the scripture and it has changed my life. We see in the book of Mark, the 15th chapter, Jesus is on the cross dying and it's the ninth hour. It's the last hour. He finna be gone. He has endured a painful crucifixion that has lasted almost two days. And in that scripture, we hear him saying, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I used to think that that was Jesus crying out to God and somewhat kind of blaming God and saying, God, why have you allowed this to happen to me? But that still didn't, it didn't make sense with me, Steve. Why would God say, why would Jesus say to God, why is this happening when he already knew what the course was going to be? He knew that pain was part of the process. And as I begin to read the scripture further, Bishop, I found out that what Jesus was saying there, he was quoting a song. I'm going to say it again. Jesus was quoting a song that is found in Psalms 22 and 1 through the end of the song. In, in, in that particular time, when you quoted the first couple of verses of the song, people would know the rest of the song and they would begin to sing the melody with you or at very least be able to quote the song. So when Jesus was in pain, he decided not to complain, but to sing God a song. Why is this important? 
is important because you need to know that in the midst of your pain, you cannot lose your soul. Why, why, why? Why does Jesus, Antoine, sing a song? Most of the time you sing a song because you know the end of the lyrics. You know the end of the verse. And in Psalms 22, it starts off by Jesus saying to God, why am I going through this? But at the end of the song, he begins to give God praise. He begins to give God glory because God, in the midst of everything that is going on, his life is in his hand and he knows even though he may not understand it, even though it may be painful right now, he knows that God has everything under control and that God has a plan. That's why you sing a song in the midst of your pain. That's why we can praise him when the unexpected happens. That's why we can rejoice when we get fired. That's why we can give him praise when we don't know what's going on because we know the end of the song. Now this is not for everybody. I'm only talking to some kingdom people. I'm talking to some kingdom people that you got some bad news and you are in pain. But pain is not the reason to stop giving God praise. Pain is the reason to find your song and even to sing even louder. So when I count to three, Ricky, we are going to sing. We are going to give God praise from the fruit of our lips. I want you because it's what Jesus showed us to do. In the midst of your pain, don't you bow down your head. Lift up your head and sing your song. Open your mouth. Give God praise in your pain because you know the end of the song. You know the end of the story. You know the end of what you're coming through and God is not finished. This is a temporary pause in the midst of my story. This is a chapter that has to close but my God is not finished yet. So when I count to three, give them all you got. Give him a praise from your pain. Give him a praise from your pain. Give him a praise from your pain. One in the name of the Father, two in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost, three, give your God a praise. Sing your song. Let hell know that they have not won. This is just a moment, but it ain't over. God's got a bigger plan. Even though I don't understand it, he knows what he's doing. So I can sing my song. Come on, come on, come on. 60 more seconds and we got to move. Come on, from your pain, from your pain, from your pain, push past the tears, and from your pain, give them. Come on, 45 more seconds. Come on, push, push, push. 30 more seconds and we got to move.
Simon from the Lord, you may have your seat. Hallelujah. It is an absolute honor to be back home and to be standing in this place and to be sharing the gospel with you. It has been two years since I stood here to preach and it's felt like an eternity. I told my wife this morning, I said, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. She said, why are you so nervous? It's home. I said, I don't know. I'm just, I'm nervous. It's, it's something different. It's just, it's, it's something different. So y'all, 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 y'all praying for me. I heard two people say, yes, I'm going to go that direction. Y'all praying for me. Sometimes when we hear the scripture, we hear something that's familiar and we automatically just kind of tune out because we say, oh, I've heard that before. And, and, and I already know where he's going or what they're finna do. But do me a favor, give me 15, 20 minutes to share something with you that I believe will be a tremendous blessing for your life. Will you, will you do that with me today? Amen. Go with me in your Bibles to Malachi, the third chapter and the 10th verse. And uh, I'm not sure who's in the booth anymore. I don't know if it's still Mike. If it's Mike, hey. Uh, but whoever's back there, I'm going to need y'all to help me with scriptures on the screen because we got we to gotta look at some and I want everybody to see what I'm saying. Malachi, the third chapter and the 10th verse. And as soon as you have it up there, or as soon as you all have it, let me know so by saying amen. Malachi 3.10 says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and prove me now this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. From this scripture and some more, we get our thought or our topic for this morning, which is this. Aim for the window. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, turn to somebody that looked like they awake. Turn to somebody and say, neighbor. Aim for the window. Find one more person that's awake and turn to them and say, neighbor, aim for the window. Here in Malachi, the third chapter and the 10th verse, it is God speaking. And he's bringing correction to his people because there is a commandment, a behavior, a law that he left them to do that they are not doing. And because they are not doing it, it is negatively impacting and affecting them and the nation and the call for the kingdom. So he gives them instruction because he says, we cannot go any further with you continuing to operate this way. So let me bring correction to this. And in bringing correction to this, let me even bring a greater understanding so that now when I'm telling you something, you'll understand why. I, I, have, a t I have a daughter now who's 21 years old, and she, she's, she's going to be a senior in college next year, and I'm extremely proud of her. But there's things now that I, I do differently with her. With her sister that's seven, and I don't know why it was such a big gap, but her sister, which is seven, <laughs> I'll tell her, go sit down. Go do this. Stop doing this, and she'll do what I say. Because the directive and the law has been spoken by the father to the child. But as the child begins to grow, you have to begin to do something that's a little bit more. You have to begin to get into the place of not only giving directions, but also giving instructions regarding those directions. Because now I want you to not only do it, but I want you to know why you're doing it. Are you here? I, I, oh. 
So Jesus here in this scripture is speaking to a group of his people that are now older. It's been a long time since the parting of the Red Sea. So there's some things I told you to do before you did, but now I need to help you do them by giving you an understanding of what happens when you do what I say. Are you still with me? He says to them, bring all the tithes. Stop. So it must mean they ain't been bringing them. We can't, we can't talk about nothing else. I'm talking to you because you ain't been doing what I told you to do. Regardless of your reason or excuse, you still are found derelict in your responsibilities to what your father told you to do. So he says, in order to change this, I need you to bring all the tithes. He didn't say some of them. Come on, now y'all with me. He didn't say a piece of them. He said all of them. Bring all the tithes and bring it into the storehouse. He didn't say bring all the tithe to Macy. Y'all got quiet, I'm finna walk. He didn't say bring all the tithe to Target. Are you with me? He says bring all the tithes where? To the storehouse. What is the storehouse? The church that you get fed at. Not the church online. Y'all got quiet again. I ain't afraid. I'm a pastor now. I can say some stuff a little different. Not TBN, God bless them. But your first place for your tithe is at the table that you get fed from. Why is this important? He says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse. Why? So that there may be meat or food in my house. You keep coming to the table to eat, but don't want to pay no bill. And order the most stuff. And complain the most about what you got. But ain't helping to buy no groceries that puts the meal on the table. God says to them, bring the tithes into the storehouse. Why? So that there is food in my house. What does this mean? And I have to hurry. The word food in my house means two things. That there is provision that is available for the ministry and for the priest. I'll say it again because I ain't scared. It is to make sure that there are resources available for the ministry and for the priest. Are you still with me? He says, if you do this, then here's what I'm getting ready to do for you. I'm now going to let you see behind the veil. I'm not just telling you what to do now. I'm going to give you some understanding to what happens when you do it. So here's what happens when you do it. Here's what he says. Prove me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. He's saying to you that when you bring it in, I pour something out. I'm going to go again on this side because I don't know if y'all awake yet, if this is still too early. He said, when you bring it in, I pour it out. I, y'all didn't get it. Let me go on over here. Y'all got to wake up. I ain't got that much time. When you bring it in, I then pour it out. But I can't pour it out until I first see you brought it. So don't be mad if there ain't no out. Because you had to get some shoes this week and couldn't bring it in. Don't get mad at God and don't get mad at me. Because you see it being poured out to me and you standing next to me and you only see the refreshing but you ain't refreshed. 
Because you are not willing to bring it in so that God can pour it out. Watch this. When God sees that you are concerned about his house and his priests and you respond with the care of it by releasing tithe and offering, then God says, I will open something to you specifically from me that won't be for nobody else. Are you here today? I'm going to pour something of me to you because you're taking care of what is mine. I'm going to go back and look at the storehouse and see, did your tithe come in to help with the lights at the church? With the upkeep of the pavement outside at the church? Did, Did your tithe offer come in to make sure that your priests will be able to eat? And if I see that your offering has, then I'm not fit to pour out something from me to you that nobody else will get. Are you here today? Now, I know that's hard to believe because we deep. I get it. So let's walk through the Bible. Let me show you some instances in the Word when there was an offering given to God And God then poured out something to the person that gave him an offering. Go with me first to Genesis. Are you still here? Go to Genesis, the 8th chapter and the 20th verse. Genesis 8 and 20. And we all know this scripture because we hear it a lot. But let me tell you where it came from. Genesis 8 and 20. Are you there? Here it goes. And Noah, 8 and 20, then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. So Noah is giving God an offering. And the Lord smelled a soothing aroma because your offering smells good to God. Your offering gets God's attention. Do you know why barbecue restaurants got big old pits <laughs> and big old smokestacks that go outside? Because they want the aroma of the smoke to get your attention, to cause you to make a U turn. To go back there. You know how I many accidents I almost got on, on, on Good Hope down here at the gas station because my guy had the barbecue out and the smoke was going up. I was like, oh my God. Because the smoke from his offering got my attention. When you give God an offering, the same thing happens to God. God may be over here, but he smells the offering, the smoke from your offering, and it gets his attention, and he comes to see what is all this that's going on over here. You know, whatever you're barbecuing, because you know I'm a connoisseur. Some people say consumer. But if you got little smoke, it means you ain't got much on the grill. You you got some weenies on the grill. Some tofu burgers. You ain't got nothing on there worth smelling. But when you throw a rack of ribs on the smoke, that smoke starts to billow, Pastor Redmond. It, it gets bigger because there's more offering that's on the fire. 
the bigger the offering, the greater the smoke, the greater the attention of God to you. I got four people clapping, okay. Noah offered an offering to God. The smoke smelled good, got God's attention. God came down, said something within himself about mankind. And then after he said something within himself, he had to say something to Noah. Because whenever an offering goes up, you get something from God for you that don't nobody else get. So when the smoke went up, God smelt it. God said, well, I got to share with Noah a mystery. Hey, Noah, let me tell you something. And he tells him here in the 22nd verse, Noah, psst, because you gave an offering, because I smelt it, because you got my attention, psst, come over here. Let me share something with you that I ain't shared with nobody else. Hey, Noah, while the earth remains, Come on, put it on the scripture. I want y'all to see it. Put it on the screen. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. Noah, I'm going to tell you a secret that's going to unlock the earth, but I'm only telling you because you gave me an offering. And if you go to the next chapter, the Bible says Noah becomes a farmer because he took the secret that God gave him and it changed his industry because of an offering. You've been wondering, God, why ain't my business blessed? Why ain't it taking off? God is saying, because I don't see no smoke from your business. And if you give me some smoke from your business, then I'll give you an insight that nobody else has to give you an industry to do that ain't nobody else done. Are y'all in here today? Well, let me go to another scripture because maybe that ain't good enough. Okay, cool. Let's go to another one. Are you still with me? Go to Genesis 14. Can I have some water, please? When you get old, you just, just, before I be like size, can you? Now it's just, I'm thirsty. Can I have some water? Genesis 14. Are y'all there? This is the story of Abraham. And Abraham has just done a major conquest. And I don't have time to walk through it, but just trust me, it's there. It's Genesis 14, 18 through 20, and the 15th chapter. Abraham has just had a major conquest. He then, the Bible says, brings a tithe to Melchizedek. He receives something, and he said, I got to bring an offering to the priest. Are y'all here? Because Melchizedek was the priest. Bring an offering to the priest. He brings an offering to the priest, and the priest says to him, thank you for the tithe. And because of the tithe, I want you to take all of this. And Abraham says to him, I can't take it. Because if I take it, then you'll be able to say that you blessed me and that you prospered me and that you opened the door. My offering is not for me to eat from. My offering is to be offered. And in the next chapter, God visits Abraham and says, because of your tithe, let me now unlock to you your inheritance. Look up in the sky. Count the stars. If you cannot number the stars that you see, that's is going to be how great the generations are that come out of you and the inheritance that you're going to receive. But that promise was unlocked because a man gave an offering and a tithe and refused to eat from it. Are you all getting this? It's another scripture. Another scripture. In 2 Kings 3 and 20, don't have time to go there. Prophet Elijah gives a prophetic word. 
And I got to say this real quick. Let me say this real quick because it came up in my spirit. <coughs> this region was in trouble. They went to Elijah. And Elijah said, bring me the, bring, bring me the keyboard player, if I can translate it. They were looking for a prophetic word, and he said, the prophetic word is not going to come until the music get right. When the music came, read it. The prophetic word flowed. The prophet was able to do with music what he couldn't do without the music. There is a sound that provokes the prophet in your preacher. Find the sound and don't lose it. Because it will provoke the prophetic out of him in this season that will remind you of how it was in the first season, says God. The prophetic word was dig ditches. God's going to send rain. They dug the ditches, spent all night doing it. Are you with me? The next day, it says they got up and gave God a grain offering. And after the grain offering, the water came. But the water did not come to fulfill the prophetic until the offering first went up. God had to smell smoke first. Are you here? So what is this window as I prepare to close? What is this window? What is this window that we should be taking aim at? This window is what God will open to you because he smells the smoke from your tithe and your offering. Are you still here? It's what will be poured out to you because he smells the smoke from your tithe and offering. So if you're going to do something, do it right. Do it with understanding and aim for the window. Pastor Emil, there's a phrase that's adopted by law. You're familiar with it. It's called loophole. Somebody say loophole. loophole. Look at Pastor Emil and say loophole. <laughs> but the modern day definition of loophole is this. It's an inadequacy in a law that can be used to circumvent the system. But that current day translation came from the original definition. And the original definition was arrow slit. Arrow slit was this small window that was in a wall that an archer would point his arrow at to get his arrow through. Because if you could find the window, you can do in seconds what it would take somebody else months to do. Because you don't have to go over the wall. You don't have to go under the wall. You don't have to go around the wall. But going to a window takes you through the wall. If you aim for the window, it'll take you through the wall. Child, how did you get that car? Because I aimed for the window. How, how did you get that job? Because when I released my tithe and offering, I was aiming for the window. How, how did you walk into that house with limited finances? How was that able to happen? Because God made a way out of no way, and God showed me something that I had never seen before because I aimed for the window. Well, Christian Faith, I hope 
and pray that that message was a blessing to you. And now we want to give you the opportunity to be able to release your tithe and offering. And we appreciate your faithfulness of releasing your tithe and offering into this church, which is part of the kingdom. It is your faithfulness from your giving that allows us to continue to be able to do the work that God has called all of us to do. I want to remind you of the word from last week that said, Remember, we talked about it last week about unseen multiplication, that what God needs to see from you first is you taking your part and dividing it or appropriating it towards him. And when you do the correct appropriation towards him and he sees that, that then positions you for an incredible multiplication that couldn't happen anywhere else. It is the unseen multiplication that happens. So I want to encourage you today to remain faithful, remain consistent. It doesn't matter what happens in your life, in your finances, in the circumstances that are going on. You continue to push through them and you're going to see God's faithfulness and Him rewarding you and making a way out of no way for you that is not made for anyone else. I know that He will because He's done it for you in the past and he'll continue to do it for you in the future. As you see on the screens behind me, you see the different platforms that we have. Again, we have Cash App, we have Easy Tithe, we have Givelify, and we have PayPal. Uh, we appreciate so much for you giving. And then right now we're putting on the bottom of the screen the address. So if, so if giving on the platforms is not your thing and you want to be able to give from a check and sending it in through the mail, we'll receive it that way as well. But we appreciate all that you do to make ministry possible here. And we pray God's blessings upon your life and upon the life of your house and your family and that God will do something incredibly special for you because of your faithfulness and consistency and giving towards the work that you are connected to and that you are a part of. We appreciate your Christian faith and to those of you that are not members of Christian faith and you've been giving as well, we appreciate that and we thank God for you as well. Well, there's a couple of announcements that I want to give to you. The first one is an update to let you know about COVID-19 and where we are with that whole process. What we want you to know is that we are looking at the date of June the 21st to be able to be the time where we can reconvene or relaunch and come back together. We have met with a lot of wise people within our congregation and in the city and within the state and along with the guidelines from uh, uh, the CDC uh, we've put together a plan that will enable us to be able to uh, come back together and to worship together and so make sure you remain connected to our social social media platforms as we'll be putting out what those guidelines are so that when you come back you know what to expect and you know what to be prepared for as we put things in place to make sure that everyone will have a safe opportunity to be able to worship God in the beauty of holiness and for those of you that feel hey I don't know if I'm there just yet. I want to give this some more time. I understand. I totally get it. I want you to know we will continue putting the message on Sunday morning at 1015 on our social media platforms. So whether you are here with us in person or whether you are at home, you're going to get the same message and you're going to be hearing what God says because we want you to know we believe that you are important and we appreciate you and we're going to continue to serve you whether you are here with us in person or whether you are still at home. We're going to try and do our best and whatever we can do to let you know we love you and we appreciate you being connected and being a part of Christian faith. So stay connected to the social media platforms and you'll be hearing from us this week about some of the updates of what that's going to look like and how excited we are to be able to get back together with you. Another announcement we have is that we have Rotor's Reflections. Rhoda's Reflections is now back and stronger than ever. Uh, I'm so proud of my wife, of her 
being so transparent and sharing her heart and her life and the things that take place with the women that tune in to hear what she has to say. And I, I, I'm so happy of the blessing that it is to those that are connected and that have respond and that help us to see how it has benefited their life. We want to encourage you that you would continue to comment, to share, to like, and to subscribe. And again, it's on all of our social media platforms, Rotas Reflections, and we're so proud of Pastor Rota, so proud of my wife for what she's able to uh, give you and content, uh, the Word of God in a way that is only, uh, uh, that, that is so, what I want to say, it's so unique and special to her. And, uh, and if you watch them, you, you know what I'm talking about. I also want to announce to you that starting this week, we're going to have these three things with me. So beginning this week, I'll be having a, um, a, a presentation that will be every Thursday. And every Thursday, I'll be talking about these three things. Well, what three things am I talking about? Well, you'll have to tune in to see. But it's not a message. It's not meant to be long. But it's three things that I want to share with you every week that, be, that it would be a point of connection inspiration, encouragement, uh, something that maybe make you laugh, make you think. But every week I'm going to share with you three things. And when you tune in this week, I want to share with you why everything needs to be in a set of three. And you'll see what I mean when you tune in. All right. So we look forward to seeing you Sunday and then Tuesday for Rollers of Reflections and then Thursdays for these three things. Amen. But last but not least, we just want to say again that we love you and we want to do what we do every single week, which is to give you a big virtual hug. And we want to, before we give you a hug, we want to, uh, we want to uh, pray that you are safe this week. We know it's Memorial Day weekend. Memorial Day is tomorrow. So we pray that while you are out barbecuing that you are safe. Uh, we, we, we pray, Mother Garrett, that you make us a blueberry uh, a cake thing just call us we'll come by there and get it <laughs> uh, we just we just we just want you to be safe with everything that you're doing uh, use caution use wisdom wear your mask do the things that are appropriate to make sure that you see this weekend with safety and you'll see the next weekend and the next weekend after that and the next one after that amen because we look forward to seeing you in a couple weeks here if you're able to come but we want to before we end be able to give you our virtual hug like we do every Every single week because we can't hug you in person but we at least want to be able to hug you by virtual reality so here we go come on get close to the screen y'all know what to do there you go here we go get close there you go Ooh, that's some good sugar I love this hug Ooh, all right well, I hope that was encouraging to you and is uplifting to you. Now that you've had church, we want you to go be the church. We love you. Bye-bye.